Following almost a decade of continuous secret nuclear tests, the United States Armed Forces introduced the Mark 41 hydrogen bomb in 1960. Specially designed to be carried by U.S. Air Force B-47, B-52, and B-70 strategic bombers, the bomb was intended to be released from high altitudes using parachutes to retard its fall, thus allowing the aircraft to escape from the target area before the detonation. The Mark 41, or B-41 bomb, remains the highest yield nuclear weapon in the U.S. arsenal, and the only three-stage thermonuclear device ever developed by American scientists. As physician Franco Cozzani put it, it was, quote, the most efficient bomb or warhead actually deployed by any country during the Cold War and afterwards. Secret Nuclear Projects To evade a full-scale invasion of mainland Japan during the last days of World War II, and to serve as a deterrent to aggressive Soviet expansionism in Europe and Asia, the United States decided to drop two atomic bombs over the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. The scale of devastation left by these nuclear bombs left the entire world in awe, but the Soviet Union was not so easily discouraged. Although Joseph Stalin was surprised at first, his successful circles of spies and communist sympathizers were already gathering intelligence about this new type of weapon. The re-establishment of the Soviet atomic project soon followed. With the intelligence gathered from the American Manhattan Project and the German Nuclear Weapon Project, the USSR conducted its first successful nuclear bomb detonation at the Semipalatinsk test site in Kazakhstan on August 29, 1949. Meanwhile, the U.S. kept advancing its own nuclear program, which led to an atomic arms race between both nations in the 1950s. Following Project 56 and Project 57, a series of four nuclear tests to study if a warhead damaged during an accident would detonate effectively, the U.S. launched Operation Red Wing. The project aimed to test second-generation thermonuclear weapons, or hydrogen bombs, and 17 nuclear tests were subsequently conducted at the Bikini and Inuitak Atolls by Joint Task Force 7 between May and July of 1956. During the exercises, the U.S. successfully airdropped its first hydrogen bomb. Hydrogen Bombs The new second-generation thermonuclear weapon was more efficient than its predecessor, the atomic bomb. This nuclear warhead provided more destructive power in a more compact size and a lower mass, significantly increasing the nuclear capacity of strategic bombers such as the B-47 and the B-52. In addition, hydrogen bombs allowed better use of scarce fissile materials such as plutonium-239 and uranium-235 making it possible to produce more bombs without consuming more resources. The Mark 17 and Mark 24 bombs were the first mass-produced hydrogen bombs employed by the United States. Both entered service following the tests of Operation Red Wing and Operation Castle, but were phased out by 1957, as the need to produce a warhead with a more powerful yield increased. The Mark 17 yielded 12,500 kilotons, while the Mark 24 had a slightly more powerful yield of over 15,000. Notably, both bombs shared the same design. They were over 25 feet long, 61 inches in diameter, and weighed over 21 tons, making the Convair B-36 Peacemaker the only strategic bomber capable of carrying them. Still, the increasing demands of the United States Air Force to produce more powerful, yet smaller and lighter bombs would force American scientists to constantly innovate in their field to defeat the Soviets in the arms race. The B-41 Nuclear Bomb In mid-1955, the U.S. Air Force issued a requirement and a feasibility study for a Class B thermonuclear weapon with a 62-inch diameter and a 10,000-pound limit. This led to the beginning of the B-41 program. The test devices were codenamed Bassoon and Bassoon Prime, and were tested as part of Operation Red Wing. 
these test beds were experimental proof-of-concept bombs, not actual designs, as the USAF's requirements evolved as scientific progress was made. In November of 1956, a bomb and a missile warhead version of the USAF's requirements were designated TX-XW-41. Although the missile version was later rejected, the TX-41 hydrogen bomb was approved by the Special Weapons Development Board. Then, in August of 1957, a prototype that weighed about 9,500 pounds, measured 50 inches in diameter, and was over 126 feet long, was detonated and yielded 44 kilotons of the expected 48. Further consecutive tests in 1958 perfected the warhead and helped the Special Weapons Development Board revise its requirements. This led to the development of the Mark 41 or B-41 bomb. Although most of the development process of the Mark 41 remains classified, it is known that it was the only three-stage thermonuclear weapon ever developed by the United States. Measuring up. The Mark 41 entered service in 1960 and was a counter to Khrushchev's mention that Russia could produce a 100 megaton bomb, which eventually evolved into the Tsar bomb. This Soviet bomb weighed 60,000 pounds and had a length of 26 feet and a diameter of 6 feet. Tsar bomb was dropped by parachute from a Tu 95V aircraft and detonated at 13,000 feet above the Dry Nose Cape in Severny Island on October 30th, 1961, with a blast yield of 58 megatons. Atomic Energy Commission Chairman Glenn Seaborg wrote a still classified memo to President John F. Kennedy outlining the possibilities of producing a similar bomb. Such a device would be 6 feet in diameter, 12 feet in length, weigh over 30,000 pounds, and could only be carried by B-52 and B-47 strategic bombers. In addition, the bomb had to be scaled up to increase the yield, which is precisely what the U.S. scientists did to the Mark 41, except its maximum yield was 25 megatons before the U.S. decided to stop the project. The last B-41 test happened in 1963, with a yield of over 35 megatons. Based on the little data available, the standard variant of the Mark 41 was 12 feet long, had a diameter of 4 feet, and a weight of 10,670 pounds. Also, it could be deployed in freefall or retarded freefall with parachutes to allow the releasing aircraft to leave Ground Zero before detonation. Immense power. Comparisons between the American Mark 41 bomb and the Tsar bomb have always been inevitable, as both were tested and used during the same time. In his 2011 article, Fission, Fusion, and Staging, physician Franco Kazani established that the most important detail about both bombs was that both, quote, were true three-stage designs. Namely, they featured a fission primary, which radiatively compressed a second stage, which in turn radiatively compressed an even larger third stage. He also remarked that despite the difference in yields, both were deployed in clean and dirty variants, depending on the nature of the tamper in the third stage. Also, in contrast to its Mark 17 and Mark 24 predecessors, the B-41, quote, deployed some 15 years later and carried by the B-52 bomber at the height of the Cold War, reached a high efficiency ratio of 5.2 megatons per metric ton of weight. The B-41 bomb reportedly came with two yields, depending on whether an inert or fissionable tamper was used in its secondary stage. The bomb's three-stage design allowed its second stage to drive a larger third one to radiative implosion, leading to its highest yield of 25 megatons, and making it the highest power nuclear weapon ever fielded by the United States. Ultimately, over 500 B-41 bombs were produced between 1961 and 1963, before it was phased out by the B-53 bomb, which had a smaller yield of 9 megatons. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the research and experiments conducted by the United States government to develop and test the B-41 bomb.
Also hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.